Welcome to Dead Man Talking. Tonight's show, we welcome back a good friend and brother from another mother, Will Ring, from over on Reddit, No Sleep. A personal favourite of mine from over on the Reddit platform, and I'm sure you guys will agree, an exciting author. As ever though, please do let us know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. It really does help build the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. And so, with that aside, let's get into tonight's story. Entitled The Beast of Carter's Lake. The Finale. Let's get straight into that. The bullets that had been fired from Darren's gun left oozing holes across the beast's chest, arms and back, but it seemed unfazed by any of them, regardless of how such a thing had caused it to flee only a little while before. And it was at that point I knew it had been fucking with me this whole time. If at least six bullets didn't so much as cause it to wince, a single shot would never have forced it to retreat, not the pitiful swat of my pocket knife. I looked over to my friends, one of whom had already fallen to this horrendous creature the other seemingly passed out beside him. I hoped he was just sleeping it off anyway. I almost jumped out of my skin when the giant hand finally released its trophy to the ground, before echoing its stomach-churning howl across the still forest. Oh, this is it, I thought as I sat on the grass, unable to convince my legs to do any more than just shiver beneath me. I had no idea why he hadn't finished the job yet, but I could only assume that he'd enjoy the scent of my fear along with what my blood had released some moments before. I couldn't help but wonder if it wanted to allow me a moment to fully appreciate what would be putting my life to a grisly end this night. Perhaps it wasn't quite ready for the festivities to come to an end just yet. Hell, maybe this fucker was just a little winded out of flipping cars and tearing its victims apart. And how the hell could I even think about figuring out what was going on in that monstrous noggin? I could feel rage setting in both at what he had done to my friend, as well as the torment he had put me through. Yes, I was screwed and I knew it, but I would be damned if I was just going to sit there and take it. Sure, this was likely to end only one way, with my blood blending in the crimson puddles that already lined the road and grass. But I had one goal in mind at the time, one simple thing I wanted to accomplish before I coughed out the blood from my own Struna Park chest cavity. I wanted to take at least one of those glowing eyes from the beast. Maybe even both, if I had the strength left before the end. As I slowly lifted myself from the ground, my enemy hunched over slightly, seemingly in preparation to pounce. My heart was jackhammering again, but I had achieved a certain degree of resolve, now that I had accepted my fate. So I wasn't about to back down. I looked a little startled, when I began to charge towards it, lifting my gun to unleash another assault of gunfire into his fur-lined flesh. It roared out while crouching down, before leaping into the air, upwards and towards me. I didn't let up on my attack, training the barrel of my gun on him as he soared through the night air right at me. Having kept it in my sights the whole time, I managed to jump to one side before it slammed hard into the ground, burying its clawed paws into the dirt. I still wouldn't stop, not until the clicking of the trigger signified I had spent my load, causing an all-too-familiar panic to reawaken within me. Yes, I had riddled the beast with holes, each of which leaked and squatted darkened fluids across the matted fur, but I hadn't even remotely slowed it down. Once more, I got to my feet, still wielding the empty gun like a worthless shield, before sprinting towards the snarling beast again. As soon as I got close enough, I swung the stock of the gun right at it, managing to catch it across the jaw. Gave a satisfying yelp before it swatted at me with its claws outstretched, tearing through my flesh of my shoulder like a hot knife through butter. I screamed more from the sound of the deep gashes being carved into my tissue as the wounds themselves went numb almost immediately, as did the filling in the fingertips of my left hand. I attempted to raise the arm, but could barely get it to twitch, let alone move. The blood gushed from the four deep rips, which had surely torn through tendons and arteries alike. 
If nothing else, I thought, maybe I'll bleed to death before I get shredded to ribbons. <laughs> I gave an exhausted chuckle while backing away from the beast, who still had my blood and skin pasted to its fingers. It stalked towards me, with its hands outstretched as though it sought to rub it in my face that it had cut me deep. <laughs> I continued my lifeless giggle while fiddling around behind me with my one functioning arm, hoping to be able to guide some sort of path of escape. When my back followed my fingers against the thick trunk of a tree, I laughed harder than before, as the madness of my impending death caused my mind to shudder. The beast cocked his head to one side, stopping in place to glare at me. It appeared to be studying me, as though it had never observed such a reaction from any of its prey. Just do it, you piece of shit, I said through gritted teeth in between my pointless laughs. Naturally, the beast ignored my words, though it crouched down onto all fours to face me directly. It still wore that furrowed and seemingly angered brow, but those glowing red eyes peered into mine as though it was curious in some way. And as we gazed upon one another, I felt my own brow wrinkle, while I allowed the smile to widen across my face. Yes, I was certain my bloody demise was only moments of wee, but the bastard didn't even realize it had given me a chance to achieve my one final goal. I tilted my head this time, hoping to let my face be committed to the monster's memory before I quickly carved my pocket knife directly into its right eye. It felt as though it popped as I attempted to force it deeper, hoping to pierce right into its goddamn brain pan and darkened pus-like fluid spewed across my hand, while a squill and howl shrieked out from its gaping maw. It jerked back before swatting at me again and sending me soaring across the air against the bark of yet another tree. Now the impact caused my head to spin, while the shrill wail of the beast caused my stomach to empty everything I had consumed over the past days. It was a sound unlike anything I had ever heard, or could even hope to describe with any degree of accuracy. I was only vaguely aware of the new injuries from the collision with the thick trunk when I wrenched across the forest floor. I attempted to hold my body up with my one good arm, feeling as though it was filled with more gelatin than bones, while lifting my head to glance back towards where I had fled from. The beast had rolled onto its back, clutching its enlarged hands over the spew and socket. I took the opportunity to force myself back to my trembling legs once again, before weaving in and out, between and around the trees of the dense woods. I could feel my body weakening, and I was sure I was in far more pain than the shock would allow me to admit. But I still had to attempt to track down where I had left my girlfriend. I was still certain I would not survive this, especially with my body growing colder by the second, likely due to the copious amounts of blood that still leaked from my shredded shoulder. But I had to reach her. Had I had the slightest ability to second-guess my actions at the time, I may have realized that if I should find her, I would have likely led the creature right to her. But my common sense had spurted from my open wounds, as much as whatever life force I had left. And as I continued my escape, I pulled off my belt, wrapping it around my ruined shoulder. I bit down in an attempt to muffle my scream as I tightened the leather down, though I had little doubt the beast could still smell my blood and piss-soaked jeans, even if I could remain silent. It wasn't until the trees gave way to that wide-open field again that I knew my time was running short. I had still been aware of the moans and whines of the beast as I sped away from it, but those agonizing sounds had now been replaced by noises filled with pure and exhilarated rage. If I had anything left in my stomach or bladder, the splitting and shattering wood a ways behind me would have caused every ounce of it to spray across the long grass. And I still kept pushing forwards, refusing to look back until I heard one last tree topple to the ground, only some feet behind me. And I finally stopped in place, realizing I was at the end my journey. While I felt whatever blood I had left drained from my face, I turned to see the Beomoth standing directly 
at the tree line, panting heavy breaths while staring me down with its only functioning eye. I can't exactly say its facial expressions were in any way relatable, but I suspect there was nothing short of pure hatred etched across the one I stared into. I clenched my fists, preparing to face the inevitable, as the thing took long strides on its hind legs towards me. My heart was in full panic mode, feeling as though it was fit to burst, but I knew there was no point in running. <sighs> I did enough, I thought, as I allowed a smirk to reach across my lips while gazing into the lone, red glowing eye. I even chuckled again, but it didn't pique the curiosity of the creature this time. It just kept drawing closer, hunching over as it approached and spreading out the clawed fingers to strike the second the gap was close enough. <sighs> I left my mark on you, you piece of shit, I said, smiling wider and more maniacal. How's that lack of depth perception treating you? I shouted, laughing like a madman. That's right, buddy boy, you'll never forget my sorry ass, will you? It released a high-pitched snarling howl that almost turned my hair white, damn the cause of my legs to give out beneath me again, but I stood my ground. I wouldn't give it the satisfaction of showing my fear, not if I could help it anyway. Ah, give me your best shot, you little bitch. I fucking de- The instant it happened, I barely had a chance to even register it. The beast was almost right on me, crouching down even further than before as though it meant to snatch me up and launch us both from the ground. When I heard the explosive sounds of multiple gunshots in succession, I almost thought it was my eardrums rupturing from my head being crushed at first. And I cut my eyes to where the shots came from, just in time to see Darren next to what looked to be another police officer, both unleashing their weapons upon the thing, before it leaped from me to where they stood. Run, Jack! My friend yelled out as the thing swiped his hand across him before digging its claws into the side of the cop. I wanted to move, but my legs wouldn't budge. I stood rooted in place, horrified at the sight of the officer's left arm being peeled away from his shoulder, like a wing of a fly, spraying thick blood and strips of shredded tissue over my friend. His squirling scream echoed across the field, before the yellowed and jagged teeth gouged into his throat, turning the shrill sound into no more than a gargled whimper. Darren had now dropped to the ground and was sliding away from the horrendous sight, with his chest heaving blood from a quartet of deep, grizzled gashes across him, trying to force the hand which held his gun up from the gravel. The creature let out another awful howl as it dropped the limp body of the fallen cop to the ground. The fresh corpse made a moistened slapping sound when it hit, which finally allowed me to take control of my legs again. I ran towards the road as the beast stalked towards my friend. It appeared in no hurry to get to him, as it had left Darren quite the mess already. It almost looked as though it was taunting him, snapping its jaws and growling as it drew closer. In time, oh, it slowed around me as I approached the road, while the monster reached down to pull my friend from the ground. I was only vaguely aware of the new sounds at first, as the only thing I could focus on was the large, fur-lined hand wrapping around both of Darren's legs as it lifted him from the gravel, and I could hear my friend screaming his own tormented howl while the beast tightened the fist which held the twin shins, crushing the bones within to little more than fragmented pulp. I cut my eyes across the road in search of the gun the cop had been discharging into the horrendous monstrosity when a flickering stream of blue lights brought my attention back to the real world. The growing sound that accompanied my friend's anguished screams was that of multiple sirens drawing closer by the second. The monster had no chance to react, as it was only paying attention to its prey. When the armoured grill of the police car made contact with the legs of the beast, I witnessed its bones snapping backwards before it tumbled across the hood and into the windshield of the car. I ran to Darren as he slipped free of the creature's grasp, tumbling off to the side of the road. More gunfire erupted, along with a variety of growls and whines. There were tearing sounds of both cloth and something leather-like being sliced through, but it all faded into the background 
as I sped to Darren's side. From what I could tell, he was unconscious, but still alive. The four gnarled ribs across his chest and stomach were gushing blood, and his legs hung limply to each side below the knee. But I did whatever I could do to shield him from the battle being waged on the road. And over what felt like minutes, the sounds of the veritable war, anguished screams and guttural growls thinned out to only moans and whimpers. Voices called out to one another, into and out of radios, while I felt a blanket being draped over my back. I don't know how long I just sat there, with my mind reeling from the shock of the night's events, while the paramedics worked on doing what they could for Darren. And more vehicles were lining up behind those who had initially arrived on scene, but it was all a blur to me. And that was until I finally remembered why we had come back out here in the first place. Without so much as speaking any word to any of the police or medics, I charged back towards where I'd hoped the wrecked Humvee to still be resting. As some voices called out from behind me, but I wouldn't stop. I had to get to her. I had to know if she was still there. It took little time to arrive back at the large SUV, still partially wrapped around the thick tree. The fact that we had been this close the whole time might cause my heart to race once more. As soon as I got there, I slammed my hand against the hood before I attempted to crawl back through the busted out windshield. Jill, baby, I'm here. Please tell me. I don't know if the sight of her raising her hand out from behind the driver's seat as I pulled myself through the opening made my heart settle more or beat even harder. But as soon as I wrapped my fingers around hers, her beautiful face peered out next to it. Oh, are you okay? I asked, still heaving for breath, while an officer and a medic gently pushed me to the side to help her out of the buckled vehicle. She just nodded, with her eyes welling up. She cut her eyes to my blood-soaked shoulder and back to mine. Are you all right? <sighs> I am now. I didn't come out, she said, wrapping her arms around my neck, while tears streamed down her face. Even when it sounded like hellfire was raining down around me. Well, like I said in the beginning, it's only been a few days since that night and I still don't quite have my mind right. My shoulder, well, I'm still pretty messed up, but my doctor is confident I can at least get partial mobility back. I got to come back home yesterday and Jill and I are already talking about moving in together. I'm so glad she managed to avoid all of the madness of that night. But she's been my rock since then. God knows I would have been completely broken without her by my side. And that Darren is still in hospital. But his prognosis looks decent. The gashes across his torso were deep, but luckily they didn't shred anything too important. His legs, though, will never be the same. They had to take the right below the knee, as the damage was far too extensive. But after a couple of surgeries, they managed to save the left. He's holding up surprisingly well, but he and I both, we have some serious physical and psychological therapy to look forward to. And of course, I'll take all of that over the alternative. Now Dane will likely be recovering from the loss of his husband for quite some time. And we're all pretty messed up about it, but nobody can deny that he was a damn hero. I know I would never have survived without his help. And neither would a Darren. Uh, Blake, he was a good man. I don't think we'll ever forget him. But I truly hope Dane will see the other side of these hard times. Well, he deserves better than this. Well, regardless of who fell or attempted to put an end to the beast of Carter's Lake, I believe it is still out there. Uh, the battle was brutal, claiming the lives of a total of four officers while leaving several more with scars that will never fade but I think we at least hurt it. From what I was told, the creature leaped back into the trees after putting up a fight that nobody expected to survive. But it left a lot of blood in its wake. Yeah, they hurt it, but I was the one who took something from it. I can neither ask nor expect anyone to believe any of this. There were no reports of what took place out in those woods that night, and some government officials made us sign some non-disclosure forms, while practically swearing on a stack of Bibles that we'd never speak a word 
about what we saw. But I've never been much of a religious man. To my knowledge, they are still out there, investigating those awful events, and possibly attempting to hunt down the beast. But I doubt it would turn out how they'd like, one way or another. <sighs> I still hear it at night, the sounds of the beast, as well as the screams of its victims. I close my eyes and it's as if that guttural howl is calling out from behind the glass of my bedroom window. Jill says she doesn't hear it, so it's likely little more than some significant mental scarring. Still, even though I live a good many miles away from where we spent that ill-fated weekend, now and then I see one single glowing red eye blinking from the darkness. Uh, maybe it's just all in my head, but perhaps I haven't seen the last of the dogman of Carter's Lake. From what I've read online, these sightings come in cycles. So I can only hope that this one, or this one has come. From what I've, <clears throat> from what I've read on, from what I've read online, these sightings come in cycles. So I can only hope that this one has come to a close. And of course, it's very possible that this, or this was only the beginning. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Wow. Certainly another one. Wow. Absolutely chest-pounding, intense, action-packed, edge of your seat story there from our good friend and brother from another mother, Will Ring. A mighty thank you to you, Will, for your patience, and of course for allowing me to narrate another one of your stories on the show. I really do enjoy your writing so, so much and find you such an exciting author. Definitely one of the best from the Reddit platform. Of course, I hope you enjoyed this rendition and really can't wait to see what adventures you take us on next. Well, guys and girls as ever, you know the drill. Please do let us know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. Well, it really does help build the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear, the DMT's Cryptid Crew. Now if you think you can pen a story packing as much punch as this, then please do get in touch with me at the contact email, which is as on screen. Contact the dead one at gmail.com I really look forward to hearing from you. I hope you all had a fantastic weekend with friends and family, whether you're working or chillaxing, and you're trying to stay fit and focused and reaching for greatness. A huge thank you for your constant support, guys, and kind words, and patience as we set up the channel back into full throttle mode really does mean so, so much to me. But as ever, remember, be safe, not sorry. The bullets have been. The bullets have been. <laughs> yes, I had riddled the beast with holes, each of which, each of which, each of which, sandwich, werewolf sandwich. As I allowed a smirk to reach across my lips while gazing into the lone red, fuck you. How's that lack of depth perception? How's that lack of depth perception? How's that lack of depth perception? Depth. <laughs>